When you want to mess with your friends in Minecraft, or just want to be the best at survival, these are some useful tricks to remember in your survival world. Number one, when people are looking around your world, they might get lost. A creative way to show them where to go is with a lectern and an oak trap door. With a book inside, it looks like an arrow. Face it the wrong way to mess with them. You can also use a banner and an item frame. At least it looks better than glazed terracotta. Number two, you probably know that you can hide water under lava with some signs, but a much better way to do this and an amazing manhunt clutch is to use kelp. For some reason, kelp allows water to withstand the lava. You can jump in, break the kelp, and any hunters that follow you in will just be standing in a one block lava pool. It's a great instant lock and it's really easy to set back up. Number three, so your dog can attack the animals around you, but what they can't do is cook them for you. It sounds mad, but foxes actually can. Using the fox's ability to carry items, drop your favorite fox a fire aspect sword and it will use it while attacking. This will kill the mob while it's on fire, cooking its meat without the need for a furnace. A fox also won't attack your friends when you accidentally punch them, giving you another reason to neglect your dog. Number four, the new dripstone falls when the block above is moved with a piston. So keep a bunch of these outside your house, ready to drop at the flick of a lever. They drop themselves on impacts and with more height, they can do insane amounts of damage. Or use it for something a bit more practical by placing it above a cauldron and underneath lava to catch the lava in the cauldron. Now nah, I'm gonna kill my mates. Number five, so you need backup and you've forgotten to bring your dog. All you've gotta do to solve this is to get a friend to tap your dog and it will stand up and teleport. If someone's in a dangerous place and you wanna send them their dog, this trick works for that too. Similarly, you can make an ender pearl stasis chamber using bubble columns that can be activated by a friend to instantly teleport you back home. Or you can make quicksand with bubble columns. Number six, wearing a pumpkin on your head to avoid eye contact with an enderman is useful, but the overlay gets annoying pretty quickly. If you wanna force someone to see this pumpkin face forever, you can enchant pumpkins with a curse of binding book and once it's on someone's head, it's completely glued on. The only way to remove it is to die and drop the pumpkin. Hope you're not on hardcore. Can anyone take this off me? Anyone? Number seven, enchantment tables have been in the game for a decade now and they still have new uses. The book turns towards the nearest player as we all know, but this still works even if they have an invisibility effect. This trick even works through walls and floors, whether they have the effect or not. So when a player thinks they're being sneaky, you'll know if they've managed to break their way into your secret base. Number eight, end crystals are very dangerous. So why not put one in someone's house? If someone places one next to something you don't want destroyed, it'll often end in disaster. Well, you can remove it somewhat safely by blowing it up with TNT. Forget all normal TNT logic, because this actually does cause a smaller explosion than just clicking the end crystal. Or dunk it in water and click it. I shouldn't have tested this one in my house. Number nine, without using any potions, it's really easy to make a fake door that inflicts poison on anyone who tries to walk through. If you haven't guessed it yet, this is done with a puffer fish. Hide this guy under a block next to the door and those poisonous spikes will send away anyone dumb enough to enter. Number 10, tridents with loyalty are very clingy. Throwing one and then filling up your inventory so you can't pick it up will make it float in the air and follow you around. To a bystander, this looks pretty cool. You can also do something that feels illegal with this. If you're up for the challenge, throwing loads of these will make a circle around you. Yeah, this isn't right for Minecraft. Number 11, if you've run out of space in your normal world or want to build a massive farm out of the way, build on the nether roof for a nice flat area. Get up there with a ladder and ender pearl and you've got 128 blocks height to build whatever you need. Once 1.18 releases, you could use a glitch to break bedrock and make use of the extra space. Number 12, your friend's gone AFK and the sun's about to set. An easy trick for keeping them out of harm's way during the night is to use a composter. Push them in and shut a trap door above them. No mobs will be able to see them. You could even use this on your own if you're too scared to fight off the mobs. Finally, one of the worst blocks in the game has a proper use. Number 13, who needs a massive prison when you can just use the natural terrain? Banish your misbehaving friend in a natural bedrock prison. Just dig down and find a two block deep bedrock crater. Make sure your friend's got no blocks, otherwise they won't have trouble escaping. <laughs> Let me out, I've got facts to tell people. Number 14, slime balls are useful, but your sword is even more useful. So when you're gathering slime balls, you don't need to waste your sword's durability on the tiny ones. They only have half a heart of health, so your hand works just fine. Also, if there aren't enough spawning, wait a few nights for the moon to get fuller, as this increases their spawn rate by a lot. Number 15, when you want to scare your friends, the sight of TNT being lit inside their build will easily freak them out. There will be zero destruction though, if you light it with an anvil on top. It looks even better when the anvil is totally hidden. But test it first, just in case Mojang patched this. Doing this underwater with other gravity blocks has the exact opposite effect. So be careful with this one. Number 16. When you make a fireplace, you'll be lucky if it doesn't burn your house down. Luckily, you can get a type of fire that doesn't actually burn anything or anyone. You could use a campfire or light an item frame using a flame bow. You've got real fire now with 100% less danger. I mean, as long as you don't hit someone with the arrow. Number 17. A very simple 1.17 trick that will totally hide your base 
safe entrance is to use a drip leaf. Stand on it and wait until it pops back up, forcing you to crawl even though it is almost as obvious as a painting. Since they're so much easier to mine than a trap door, bring them with you while you go strip mining, as it's way more efficient to make a one block tunnel as it exposes more blocks per block mine. Number 18. When you're making a trade with a friend, you can secretly steal their items with this method. Hoppers work through carpets or slabs, so any items dropped on the floor will instantly disappear and go straight to your chests. Mine carts with hoppers work through full blocks too, but don't have as much space. Or put magma blocks under the carpet in your mate's house and they'll burn with no idea what's causing it. Number 19. This one will impress your friends and probably scare them at the same time if they're holding valuable stuff. Tell them to get in a bed and not get out. Now, pour lava over them. Yeah, trust me. The lava will do no damage at all. Maybe keep some fire resistance potions on hand just in case they try to get out. Make sure to do this somewhere that isn't flammable or this'll happen. Number 20. The certified rarest item in the game is the dragon egg, since there's only one per world. So Mojang decided to make you lose it with just one click. Great idea. If you or one of your friends does accidentally lose this symbol of your hard work, it can't teleport more than 15 blocks away, so that should help with your search. You can even mine them if there's nowhere to teleport to, but that's going to be a cramped trophy room. Number 21. After building a giant city in your world, it can take a long time to get from one side to the other. Since boats go over slabs, you can make a faster pathway around town with waterlogged slabs to speed up the journey. You could try using blue ice because they go at 70 blocks per second on it, but that's a bit overkill and hard to obtain. Number 22. Since powder snow looks pretty much the same as normal snow, you can hide this stuff in a snowy area and have a few blocks of air beneath it, allowing you to make traps or have a secret base beneath the ground. Or just use it to disappear when your friends turn their back, but they'll probably figure out how you did it. You can actually open chests underneath it, so you could have a compact secret storage space. Number 23. Some blocks you're already using can be modified to give them a little bit more blast resistance, helping your defenses. You can smelt sandstone, for example, into smooth sandstone to make it over seven times more blast resistant and take nearly triple the amount of time to break. If you don't fancy smelting things, slabs are a lot safer. Two slabs can be stronger than a normal block. This even saves materials, so why not? No Number 24. A block that often goes underused in Minecraft is the tripwire hook, especially in multiplayer. They're great for more than just traps too. Armor yourself up just by walking past the dispenser activated by one. Trigger the dripstone dropper from earlier, or use it as a decoration, like in a bathroom or as a microphone. However, always make sure to use shears to disable any traps without setting them off. I've made this mistake too many times. Ah! Number 25. Hopefully you're using a shield when you fight on your SMP, but instead of using a crafting table with two shields to repair it, you might not realize that you can actually just use planks in an anvil with a shield to make that repair. Another cool bonus of this is that they'll keep their pattern, which doesn't happen when you use a crafting table. Number 26. Food can run out quickly on an SMP, and even faster if you have to share your supplies. To solve everyone's food problems, all you need is a dandelion, or a blue orchid if you're in a swamp. Add these to the recipe while making mushroom stew, and you'll get the best food source in the game. Plus, if you're stuck in the nether or on the nether roof, mushroom stew is a great food source until someone comes to save you. Number 26. Seven. Your SMP or survival world might get a little bit boring after a while. If that happens, try something new. You could try having a really small world border to add a little bit of challenge, or set yourself a goal like obtaining every block and item in the game. Number 28. You can locate another player using arrows. If they left an arrow on the floor, light it through lava and make it hit TNT. The knockback you get from the TNT will be in the exact opposite direction to the player. Just don't let it blow you up. Number 29. There are certain types of block in the game that don't disappear after they've been on fire for a while. Like barrels, crafting tables, chests, or campfires. So, for example, try playing some fire tunes to your friends on a note block or jukebox. Okay, that wasn't very funny. Number 30. When your chests are overflowing, stop using lava to destroy items. If you're gonna destroy food, make sure to check if it can go in a compost at first. And trust me, you'll be happy when you haven't run out of bone meal. Cacti can destroy even more items than lava too. Unlike lava, you'll probably survive if you fall into your cactus trash can, which helps. Number 31. Speaking of cacti, they're also great for building defense walls, though they're pretty easy to destroy. You can actually break the laws of Minecraft and place certain blocks next to them, which you can learn more about in this video here. Watch it and subscribe!